What's going on everyone? So welcome to yet another director ranking list. If you're new to my channel, I've done many different directors where I focus on ranking their movies from worst to best. I've done such directors as Paul Thomas Anderson, David Lynch, David Fincher, many other directors. You can check out the uh, list down below. But guys, obviously if you're new to the channel also, I wanted to let you know, I just do either theatrical films or streaming films that the directors focus on. Not short films or music videos or even TV shows. That would be totally different. So, Gore Verbinski is a director that's done 10 movies as of right now, and so I'm going to be ranking them from 10 being his worst to 1 being his best. And again, in my opinion, so yours is probably going to be different than mine, but with all the exposition aside, let's get into it. So, my number 10 is The Mexican. Uh, that is with Brad Pitt and Julia Roberts, and I wasn't the biggest fan of this movie. I thought it was kind of middle of the road. Uh, Gore Verbinski's directing was okay, I guess. The acting was good for the most part, but the story and character development really didn't really interest me in the slightest. And on top of that, I thought it wasn't fleshed out in the slightest. Um, it's a diverting movie for sure, like I can see some people enjoying this movie, but for me personally, pretty forgettable. I already forget about it, honestly. So that's my number 10. My number 9 is Mouse Hunt. Mouse Hunt's a movie that honestly I saw a couple times about, I'd say, 7 years ago, and I liked it. But I was like, you know what, I think I should rewatch this movie while doing this list because I wonder if my view's going to change on the movie. And... It did. Um, I chuckled a couple times, but it wasn't as funny and endearing as I remembered. Um, I guess because I was so young when I saw it last, but, you know, seven plus years later, with all the movies I've seen, I just kind of realized it's really not as special as you kind of want it to be. Because there are elements that could make it special, but it just is so formulaic, and it is so cartoonish. And some of it works. Some of the cartoonish antics really, really work. But there are a lot towards the final act that I just, for the life of me, really tried to appreciate but really couldn't. I was like, really? There's just things that characters do where it's like, dude, are you serious? And those are the type of comedies where I'm like, not my tempo. <coughs> but uh, that's my number nine. My number eight is a movie that, just like the other two movies I just mentioned, it's like diverting but not good, in my opinion. But number eight is The Weatherman. The Weatherman is with Nicolas Cage, as, you know, you guys probably presumed, is a weatherman. The movie has a lot of funny moments, and I really like the score by Hans Zimmer and the main performance by Nicolas Cage, but everything else, including some really odd subplots, just really don't work to the overall flow of the movie. And I really do think that the only thing that's really going to sit with me at the end of the day is the fact that Nicolas Cage is performance is so zany and so hilarious that it easily carries the movie. Gore Verbinski's directing is fine, but it's not by any means like really good directing in my opinion. But again, these are his movies that I think are, you know, again, are middle of the road. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty movies. So my number seven is The Ring. Now The Ring is a movie that I know a lot of people have higher up on their list, which I totally understand. I think my problem is I saw The Ring and I did like it. I gave it like a three and a half, four out of five star rating. Last year though, I saw Ringu, which is the one that inspired The Ring. I watched Ringu and then I rewatched The Ring again in preparation for doing all this. And I gotta be honest, it's kind of cringy how much The Ring takes from Ringu. I get it that it's a remake, but there is so much. There's not really much organic like stuff that really is different. I feel like it's still solid, like it's visually appealing, the cinematography is really good, and I do think Naomi Watts acting is really good as well. But again, there's just too much familiarity, I think, for my personal taste, and nothing really that stands out. Although I will say there are a couple creepy moments that did work. Uh, but again, it's by no means a bad movie, it's a rock solid movie. I'd say give it a watch. So now we're getting to the movies that the top six, uh, all six of these I actually own. Uh, number six is Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. So this movie, I hated the first time I saw it. Uh, I saw it first time, I believe, it was seven, eight years ago. I hated it. Um, I thought it was a very convoluted movie. I thought it didn't really make much sense. And uh, in preparation for this list, I was like, yeah, I need to rewatch this movie. So I rewatched the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. 
And I have to be honest, upon second viewing, I like this movie. And that's why I decided to buy it on Blu-ray. This is one of the new additions of my collection right now. I like it. I can see myself re-watching this movie. There's so much to take away from it. Not only are the visual effects, the makeup, the costume design, the acting, the action scenes, the score. Not only are all those incredible, but there's just sense of like urgency, but at the same time, leisure pacing that I really appreciated because I feel like the movie has so much going on that it really is kind of cool that there is scenes that let the levity breathe. And then there are a lot of scenes also where there's a lot of frantic stuff going on. But it's a movie that I feel like always has its main goal in sight, even if at times it might come off as convoluted. I feel like that's just Gore Verbinski's style, and I know a lot of people don't like this movie, and again, I didn't the first time either, but I really did like it the second time, and I wonder if it's going to hold up upon multiple viewings. I hope so, because again, I bought it on Blu-ray, so let's hope it holds up. So that's my number, uh, my number six. My number five is a movie that also is in the same series. And uh, much the same ways as at World's End is Pirates Caribbean Dead Man's Chest, uh, which I also own on Blu-ray, also one of the new additions to uh, you know my collection. This is a movie I, again, also saw a second time. Now, the difference is that the first time I saw this, I thought it was solid. Second time, though, I actually thought it was good. And I have to say at World's End, I would also argue it was good. But this is a movie that I think it was cool watching it now because it was so ahead of its time in terms of blockbuster filmmaking. Uh, it has an ending that is a cliffhanger, but every single arc still is complete up to that point. And I think that's something that so many blockbusters nowadays are kind of forgetting about. They're so occupied with setting up for a new film that when in retrospect you look at that movie, it's like there's no arcs that are complete. Versus this movie, if for some reason if this movie failed at the box office, you would still have satisfaction to a certain extent. And I think that's the props of... Again, 2000s blockbuster filmmaking. When done well. There are a lot of 2000s movies in terms of blockbusters that are terrible. But the ones that stand out, such as this, I think are worth meriting. And again, all of Gore Verbinski's flourishes really do help this movie uh, stand out. And I forgot to mention it with that World's End, but I'll say it with World's End and Dead Man's Chest. These are two of the, like, the, the weirdest and strangest blockbuster mainstream movies. And I am so glad that they became like popular because... It gives me hope that movies this strange are able to reach mainstream audiences and be appreciated. I don't know. That's just something I personally liked about them. Um, maybe just my personal taste. But uh, that's my number five. <coughs> my number four is a movie that I saw it in theaters and I've seen it so many times since then. And for the life of me, for the life of me, I really do not understand the hate for this movie. And I probably will be defending it until I go to my grave. Number four is The Lone Ranger. Now look, I know so many people that hate this movie. So many people. But I've got to be honest. You know, this is a movie that I think is really, really good, honestly. Sure, you can argue the story is a mix of Once Upon a Time in the West. Uh, mixed in with, of course, excuse me, Pirates of the Caribbean and The Mask of Zorro. Which is understandable given that's the same screenwriters that did Mask of Zora and Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I think that it stands out enough to where it's like you can watch it and be entertained by it, but you can also analyze it. Uh, the way the action scenes are handled, I think especially from a choreography perspective, it's really, really good. And I think that you can look at it from that point of view. But also keep in mind that the story is told from the point of view of Tonson, played by Johnny Depp as an older man who clearly has some sort of dementia. And it's really a good structure, I think, personally, because the movie, yes, is disjointed, but let's be honest. How many times is it that when you talk to an older person that they get off track or they are repetitive or they just totally aren't, you know, there? A lot, probably. And that's what I'm saying. The Lone Ranger uses that structure, I think, to its advantage because it's being told from the perspective of an older person telling it from someone's perspective from 50 years ago. So it makes sense to me personally. I get why some people don't think it works, but I don't know. I personally am able to like analyze it and really appreciate that. Also, again, not only is the action great, but I think just Gore Verbinski's style really is great in this. It's strange, it's clever, and I love the final action set piece. Best action scene of 2013, if you ask me. But. I, I've been meaning to do like an analysis video of this movie, and I know a lot of people are like, what? 
But I do think that this is a good movie, and I know a lot of people are probably like, whoa. I like it though. So, and I, maybe, maybe I'll do a video in the future. So that's my number four. <coughs> my number three is a movie that I saw it in theaters, kind of like Lone Ranger. Uh, this movie, though, is one of the more critically acclaimed movies that Gore did. And number three is also a movie I finally decided to buy, and that's uh, Rango. That's right, number three is Rango. Rango, I think, is a very clever movie, and I think that the more I viewed it, the more I've appreciated it, because there are so many film references in this movie. Um, you know, it's kind of crazy, honestly, because as a 15-year-old watching this movie, I didn't catch on any of the movie references, but with each viewing, I caught on more and more. They reference Chinatown, obviously. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which I, I I didn't get the references in it until this recent time because I recently saw the movie within the past year or so. So it's just incredible just that you can watch a movie and just really pick up on stuff. But it's not just the humor. It's the fact that, and this is the movie where I kind of realized, like, wow, Gore Verbinski really loves Western movies because... He did Rango, which obviously is a straight-up Western, and he did Lone Ranger, but the Pirate Scary Bay movies, I would argue, are kind of in a Western fashion. Like, there was one scene in At World's End, again, getting back to that movie, but there's literally a scene at World's End where they're on a beach, and the bad guys and the good guys are meeting up, and it's like almost like a standoff, and the way Hans Zimmer's score in that is orchestrated, it sounds as if it's something from, like, Once Upon a Time in the West. And similar to Rango, there are also scenes that sound like it's from Once Upon a Time in the West. I love On Spot Time of the West, so I'm able to eat that up. But Rango is also just a movie that's a fish out of water movie that manages to have many references to other movies, but at the same time, it is kind of original in its approach. And for that, I give it props. I love Rango. So that's my number three. Uh, honestly, Rango could have been my number two, but I think because my number two I've seen so many times, I kind of have to give it to my number two, uh, which is. Pirates Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Look, this was my introduction to Grover Verbinski. I didn't even know who he was when I first saw this in uh, middle school. But I knew there was something special, and with each viewing, I still love this movie. It's not a perfect movie. Um, I do think that in the second act, there are some scenes that kind of slow the pace a little bit, but that's also kind of Gore Verbinski's thing. But nonetheless, I still think that this is a special movie. Again, it's a blockbuster that I think is really special, and I hold it dear to me. And it's not for nostalgic reasons why I like it. I think from a filmmaking perspective, it is really, really good. And then from an entertainment perspective, it's also really good. Uh, I would say in terms of Gore Verbinski's movies, this is probably the one I've seen the most. Lone Ranger probably would be the second uh, most I've seen, because I have seen The Lone Ranger a lot, too. Uh, now, my number one, I haven't seen as much as all these other movies, because it's only been out for <sighs> three years now. Um, and that is my number one, which uh, a lot of people are probably going to be surprised, but my number one is A Cure for Wellness. Look, uh, I was going through a difficult time when... Um, when this movie came out. So I didn't see this in theaters. I wanted to, I'll never forget. I wanted to see this and then it was a couple weeks later I finally was like, you know what, I'll see it. And of course it wasn't showing in theaters anymore because it bombed at the box office. Critics hated it, audiences hated it, but I was still interested in it because I thought the trailers made it look interesting. And then I decided to watch it on Blu-ray, you know, when it finally came out, got it at the library and uh, I liked it. Didn't love it, but I thought that there was something I was missing and then I watched it again and Again and again, and I've seen it probably now at least a half a dozen times, and it's only been out for three years. There is something really special about this movie. I think that it's so odd, so bizarre, so original its approach. Like You could argue it looks like Shutter Island almost, but it manages to stand out. Like There are definitely differences between Shutter Island and this movie. And more importantly, I think the fact that this movie is so, so, so twisted makes it especially endearing for me because Gore Verbinski is a director that I'll get into like all whether I like him or not, but I think that he's a director that clearly has a lot on his mind. Like when he's making these movies, he has a lot on his mind. And I just love the fact that this movie is two and a half hours, but it's rated R and it's not based on like a superhero movie or a comic book or another property. It's an original movie that's almost two and a half hours long and he's fine with being able to take his time with it. And there's something endearing with that because how often does that happen? Not too often. It will probably happen a lot often with him. Probably not because it bonds at the box office. But I do think that this movie is very special. I think that if you watch it, even if you're not into like gothic horror, I think that there'll be things that you can appreciate about this movie because it is a special movie. And that's why it's my number one. I really like it. And I'm looking forward to watching it many, many more times. 
So, that's my ranking for Gordon Verbinski's movies, guys. Now, if you see my other videos, you know I like doing this, so I'll, I'll do it again. Um, the director, do I like him, do I not? Let's get into it. So, Gordon Verbinski, I do like. Sure, like I said, he has three movies that I wasn't the biggest fan of, and then one movie I thought was just solid. But one to six, I thought was teetering from like great to like solid. And I think that that's something about Gore Verbinski that I really admire. He is the most artsy mainstream director, I like to think, because his movies, again, are so bizarre. They are so out there in how they approach things. The humor is so unique and dry sometimes that it's kind of like, wow, it almost feels like it's made for like a certain niche of people that if they get a hold of it, they'll really be able to appreciate it. And I don't know, I just feel like I'm part of that niche because Gore Verbinski hits all the check marks for me. Uh, I like strange movies for sure, but again, I can appreciate movies that are kind of like safe. I don't want to say safe, but like movies that are more accessible for audiences. But I feel like Gore Verbinski is not really interested in that. He has his own style, he has his own approach, and he's fine with going about that. But more importantly, his movies are visually stunning uh, with some of the best cinematography in his movies. Simply put, I love his cinematography in his movies. He uses Hans Zimmer a lot. I like Hans Zimmer. Uh, yeah, Hans Zimmer sometimes can have like scores that aren't the best, but when you pair Gore Verbinski with Hans Zimmer, the score is usually incredible. Uh, the sound mixing is always great in his movies. Uh, he always gets fun performances, whilst at the same time, when need be, serious performances are good. And then I love the way he mixes the score with like the sound effects. I think it's really effective. He's just overall a director that I think is underrated and is why I decided to watch all 10 of his movies because I just feel like not many people talk about him. And I think that even when a lot of people think that he misses, I think that people are missing the fact that that movie might not be bad. You know, it might be something that you just need to watch a second time. But that's just me personally. I like Gore Verbinski, and I think that's why I'm partial to doing this. But nonetheless, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on Gore Verbinski. Uh, let me know your thoughts on his movies. Rank them from worst to best in the comment section down below. And, uh... Who do you guys want me to rank next? Uh, right now I have Ridley Scott, Robert Zemeckis. Uh, I have like one film a piece for them, and then uh, Lars von Trier I have on the list. Alfred Hitchcock I got to get around to. Same with Richard Linklater. But if you guys have any other directors you want me to do, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget the subscription, notification bell. And I'll uh, catch you guys later.